Hello everybody, this is Carmichael the Cat, and welcome to your ninth Lua 5.2 tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over some of the more advanced features of Lua's tables. This is going to be the first of two videos where we do this. In this video, we're going to be make, making the equivalent of a C++, Java, or really any other object-oriented programming language class. And what that means is we're going to be making a structure that can contain variables, functions, including constructors and destructors, which we'll go over in this video, and several other things. And then we can make separate instances of that structure that exist completely separately from each other and can interact with each other. So let's get started. So what we're going to be making in this video is a player class. So what we're going to say is player. And we'll give it a capital P because that's just a convention in most object-oriented programming languages to name uh, objects like classes with capital letters. And then we'll say open curly brackets and close curly brackets. So now all of the players, what are called member variables, which are the variables that uh, exist inside the player, and member functions, which are functions that exist inside the player, they all go in this table. So we'll give them an x position, we'll set it to zero by default, y position, also zero by default. We'll give him a name, name, we'll set it to empty string by default. Um, what else can we give him? We'll find some more things to give him as we go along. And then for functions, we'll say function new and it won't take any parameters and we'll make that in a minute this is going to be the equivalent of a constructor in object-oriented programming and then we can say we'll give him a move function to move his x and y position so we'll say move and then by x and by y and those will be numbers and uh... keeps unindenting this don't know why and that's good for now we'll probably add a few more things but we'll figure that out as we go along so the first function we're going to create is the new function so what we need to do with this new function is we need to allow a new instance of this class or what it really is, is a table to be created so to do that uh, what you might think we would do is we would just say return oops return player so we're returning this uh, table and everything inside of it but since tables are reference types what we'd really just be doing is returning a reference to this player table so any changes we made if we were to say uh, p1 equals player dot new if we tried to do this then p1 would be a reference to our player table and so any changes we made to the p1 table would also be made to this uh, pl original player table and the way classes work in object-oriented programming my pr programming sorry is that this original player we'll call the class from now on in this situation so this original player class this is supposed to be a template that we can create new instances of the class off of so this should never change and we should be able to create new completely separate instances of it that ha that when we change values in them have no effect on either this original player table slash class or any of the other instances that have been created so to create a new player we need to do something a bit more complicated and what we're going to do is we're going to use a different kind of for loop for now there's an easier way to do it but we'll get to that in the next video so we're gonna use a different kind of for loop for now it's called the generic for loop and I'll create a separate tutorial on this later but uh, we can just use a simple version of it right now we're gonna say for k comma space v in and then a predefined function called pairs and we'll just give it player as the parameter and we say do and end so the generic for loop in this form is just used for looping through tables that have named uh, named keys so like X is a named keys like we went over in our simple t simple simple tables tutorial sorry I keep misspeaking so 
this generic for loop will uh, return, will set the k and v variables to, well the k variable will be set to uh, a string containing this x variable name, so it'll be x, and then v will be zero, the value of this variable. So it'll return the key and the value. So what we can say is that our player, or we can create a new table here, we'll call it p equals empty table, so we've created a new table and this will be our kind of template for the player, and we'll say p at position k, so first, in the first run of this for loop that will be a string named x, which will, this is kind of just like saying p dot x, and we're going to say equals v. So in the first run of this for loop, it'll be saying p at position x is equal to 0 because that's the value stored by x. And that's the equivalent of saying p dot x equals 0. Then the second run, it will say y or p at position y is equal to 0. And then p at position name is equal to empty string. So we're just kind of creating a new table or class instance in this case that has all of the same values as the initial values of this player template table. So after we set all the values, we're just going to return our variable p. So now what we're doing when we call this player.new function is we're creating an entirely new instance of this template table that we can modify values in and it won't have any effect on other separate instances or our original template table. And then p1 is just storing the reference to the new table. So now if we were to say p1.x is 10, uh, p1.y is 20, oops, 20, and then p1.name equals call it Bob not very creative I'm sorry then we could print out all of these and you could guess that if we were to print p1.x oops p1.x p1.y and p1.z or not p1.z p1.name then we'll get 10 20 in Bob because that's what we just set the values to but now also if we were to uh, create a p2, so we'll say p2 equals player dot new. I cannot type today. I'm sorry. And then we set p2 dot x to we'll say 30. And actually, let's do this before we print out p1's values. So we're going to do this right here. And there is a point to this. So you'll see in a minute. So p2.x equals 30. Forgot to put the equal sign there. Again, I can't type. I'm sorry. p2.y equals 50. And p2.name equals Steve. Forgot quotes. Not at my best today. I'm sorry. Uh, now, we'll print out all of p2's members. So print p2.x p2.y and p2.name. So the way we were writing the player.new function before where we just returned a reference to player, um, these two calls to the function would just uh, set p1 and p2 as uh, more references to this player table. And so when we set the variables here, they would set the players versions of these variables too because they're both pointing the references are both pointing to the same thing as well as when we set the uh, variables by setting them in the p2 reference we'd also be changing the variables for p1 and the original player because again they're pointing to the same thing but by doing it this way we're creating a completely new table that only this p1 has a reference to so the p1, p2, and original player template are completely separate. They are completely separate instances. They have nothing to do with each other. And we can prove that by just running this program. I forgot parentheses somewhere. Uh, line 5. 
function new. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I forgot to put commas after the end just because this is a variable, so we need a comma after it to denote that we want to move on to the next variable. And it's still saying we have an error. So one second, I'm going to figure out what that is, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I figured out the error. The problem was that you're not allowed to use the uh, more standard function notation when you're declaring a function within a table. You have to say name equals function, and then the rest of the function. So you have to declare your functions like this when you're creating them inside of a table. I did not know that. I guess you learn something new every day. So that was a problem. Not too big of a problem. Just a small thing. So now if we run this, it should work fine. We get 10, 20, Bob, 30, 50, Steve. So we can see that P1 and P2 are completely separate instances of the same basic table template. They both have x, y, and name variables. They both have a new function, though I guess we don't use that. And also they have a move function which we haven't implemented yet, so let's do that now. We'll say x equals, ooh, that's going to be hard. Um, we're going to say, call this new x. I forgot that there's no way to differentiate between the x within the class and the parameter x for a function in Lua. In most object-oriented programming languages there is, but um, for now not in Lua. There is a way to do it, but we'll get into that in either the next tutorial or a later tutorial. So we can say x equals or x equals x plus new x and y equals y plus new y. So now we can, after we print these out, we can say p1.move and we'll say by 10 and 10, not 190, 10. And then we can say p2.move, call the same thing on the different instance, and we'll move it by a different amount, say 70 and 90. So now, let's just copy these lines again, we'll print them again, and we can get rid of the p1.name and p2.name since we haven't changed the names of the classes, we've only changed the x and y with our move function. And by the way, the move function is just uh, adding something to x and adding something to y to move the x and y position of the player. So now if we run this, we get another error. Uh, attempt to perform arithmetic on global x. Uh, one second, I'll figure that one out too. So the problem with this was that since this table isn't really a class, it's just a table, so it's not a class per se like in C++, um, these curly brackets don't create a separate scope, so when we just said x, we were just trying to look for some global x, but we really had to say player.x. In languages like C++ that have predefined classes, if you were to say x within some kind of function definition within a class, it would automatically assume, like for example, if we created this player class in C++, if we were to reference a variable x, then it would automatically assume that we're looking for player.x, but since this is really just a table, Lua doesn't do that, so we have to explicitly say player.x equals player.x plus y. I changed the variable names back to x and y because we can do that now since there's a way to differentiate between our player's x and the parameter x. Oh, I accidentally wrote y there. So that's the problem with that. Just make sure when you're trying to reference a variable within the class, you add the class's name and then dot that variable name. So in this case, player.x equals player.x plus x and player.y equals player.y plus y. Another small problem, but it is important to note. So now if we run this, we get 1020 Bob, 3050 Steve, and then 1020 and 3050. So you can see that when we called the p1.move and p2.move functions, the x and y values weren't actually changed. And the reason for that is because in our move function, 
we're saying player dot x and this is what this is doing is it's changing the values of the x and y in the template player the template table for our classes that we create so now we've what we've done is we've added 10 to this player tables x member and 10 to its y member and then 70 and 90 to its x and y members too so we didn't actually change the values of our p2 and p or p1 and p2 instances we changed the values of the template table player and this is another complication that comes with um, this not actually being a class and it just being a table we have to be a little more explicit and uh, just add a few more things before we can uh, change have a function change values within a specific instance so for now what we have to do there is a slightly easier way to do this but we'll get to it in the next video so we have to create a separate parameter in the move function and we'll call it p and what this is going to be is it's just going to be a reference to the instance of the player that you want to the instance of the player that you want to have the x and y values moved so now we can change this from player.x to p.x this be p.y and this be p.x and this be p.y so now if we call this and we pass p1 in here because this is the instance of the player that we want to move by 10 and 10 and then add p2 as a parameter here because this is the instance of the player that we want to move by 70 and 90 oh whoa I think I just dragged that text I didn't know you could do that So f6 and when we run this now it works properly we get 10 and 20 here before we move it and then 20 and 30 here after we move it so it was successfully moved by 10 and 10 and then we have 30 and 50 before we move it and then 100 and 140 after we move it by 70 and 90 so 30 plus 70 is 100 50 plus 90 is 140 so now it was moved properly so this is just another complication like I said with uh, um, this not actually being a class template it just being a normal table just like any other table so we have to be more explicit because again there's no scope that's created that assumes that when we say that when we uh, reference some x variable there's no scope that assumes that uh, we're referencing the x variable within this table it's just trying to find some global x variable and then when we say player.x it's trying to change the actual values within this table rather than assuming that we mean we want to change the values of the instance that we've created instead of the template so we for now we have to pass um, the p1 and p2 in as separate parameters and in the next video we will get to an easier way to do this so that we don't have to do something so that we don't have to do something that looks so redundant so um, we'll get to that in the next video so this is the basics of how you create a structure like a class in Lua and this video is more of a conceptual video there are a few more things that we'll go over in the next video like meta tables and the way to call functions so that we can pass in an instance like this without a redundant call like p1.move and then p1 is a parameter we can get rid of this and we'll get to that in the next video so like I said this is more of a conceptual video just showing the concept of how to create a class with Lua's tables with our constructor as a function called new and if I didn't mention it this is the equivalent of a C++ or Java constructor and then we also have our member functions and member variables that we can use to modify the way the class works and like we see here we can create separate instances of the class that exist uh, separately from each other with different values and they can interact so again in the next video we'll be going over meta tables and I'll, I'll explain what those are in the next video and we'll also be going over the way to call this fu functions like this move function uh, less redundantly so see you in the next video